Good morning. My name is Milton Brooks. I work for Trinity Watershed Management. Um, we're glad you are all here. Uh, just in case, this is the uh, Mill Creek Peaks Branch State Thomas, if I get it right, uh, drainage relief tunnel uh, pre-bid meeting. Uh, we're glad that you all came. We're, we'll get started. Um, we'll have some introductions. This is our agenda. You'll hear, hear some information about the project, some particular information about stormwater pollution, uh, our good faith effort, and then some of the more project information. We'll, have, we'll ask you to save your questions to the end of the presentation. Uh, there were, there were uh, question pieces of paper to write your questions on. Uh, most of the questions, as you know, we'll be happy to take them. Most of them will be answered through an addendum following the meeting. Uh, this is our team for, our, for, the, for the project. Our, the director of Trinity Watershed Management is Sarah Standifer. Uh, I'm the uh, senior program manager in charge of the project. Jose Lopez is the project manager. Uh, Ray Bernard, Brainerd, excuse me, Ray Brainerd is the pre-construction manager. Paul Smith is, go is going to be our construction manager for Black and Beach. Eduardo Udemar Silva, I, I apologize. I, I slaughter his name every time I talk to him. So, is, is the project manager for Black and, Be Black and Beach, and Randy Romack is the principal in charge. Todd Woodson is the design engineer with HALF. We're Keith Gaspar is with Covey now, used to be Ginny Engineering a long time ago when we started this project. And Don Brock in the back is the principal in charge for uh, HALF Associates. We have members here. Um, Emily Rigg, Riggs with K Strategies is, is on our uh, public information team. Scott Morris is with Stormwater Management. And Lisa Alonzo is with our Business Diversity Group. Uh, please, if you didn't sign in, please sign in. Uh, that's the way we know that you're here and the, rate they, the way that we can contact you later. If the project bid documents, um, you can pick them up at Oak Cliff Municipal Center in Oak Cliff. Uh, they're $15 for a flash drive. You can call 214-948-4250 and make arrangements to have them FedEx to your company or, or mailed out. You must be a registered plan holder to, to receive the addendum if we have, one, if we have any. The only... Uh, the only the the flash drives contain all of the bid documents or that that you need and it has uh, miscellaneous information on it as well pertaining to the city of Dallas, but the one document that's not on there is the North Central Texas Council of Government Standard Public Works Construction. It's a copyright material. You have to buy that yourself from them. You can you can access them with that number or through the website. Uh, as time permits, we will have a networking opportunity after the pre-bid meeting. Okay, the project schedule for, for now is the bids are due the 1st of September at 1 p.m. in this building on the third floor to the business procurement and business development. It'll be opened at 2 p.m. on that same day down in our business center on the L L2 FN Center, one floor down from where we are. We uh, expect to award the project this fall, start construction if, um, in, a, in a month or so after that, depending on, on the timing of the actual award. And of course, it's a, fi it's, it's a five year project. Okay, this is our watershed. I'm gonna ask Jose Lopez to come up and give you a little information about the history of the project and why, how we got here. Well, thank you, Milton. Um, as you know, my name is Jose Lopez. I'm the project manager of this project. And I'm gonna talk about a little bit of history of this project. As you can see here, um, 
this is the limits of the three watershed that we have for this project, for the Mill Creek, Peaks Branch, and the State Thomas. And uh, this is the alignment of the tunnel project. Um, some flooding occurs um, for, um, for many years here in Dallas uh, for these three watershed. And uh, basically, um, they were origi original, sorry, um, Mill Creeks and Peak Branch, they were original streams that drain into the Trinity River and the White Rock Creek. What happens is that early in the 1900s, those streams were um, enclosed on, in on the ground system. And uh, what happened next is uh, the existing drainage system that we have in our streets, they have been undersized, and now they're causing some floodings that cause uh, about uh, 10 feet high um, elevation. Um, about 3,800 uh, properties, they have been impacted with this flooding, and uh, these are at least one feet high of uh, flooding. Um, what you can see in these slides, we have, this is the, this, the flooding that we have in May, in May 1995. This is from the Fair Park, where you can see some cars have been uh, moved one over the other because of the flooding that we have at that time. Um, the next uh, picture that we have here, um, this is the flooding that we have in May, March 2006. And that one is from um, Interstate I-30. Um, you can see here, this is the police car, it's the same picture that we have in the area, so you have an idea how much water you will have for that time. Um, we have another picture, this is the same flooding that we have in March 2006. Um, here is a close to Baylor Hospital, and we have two locations where you can see the, how high was the water at that time. And the next uh, slide that we have here, is from the same March 2006 flooding that we have. In this case, you can see the picture from Wall Street. Um, it was the same flooding that we have at that time. Um, for people to have any idea from where we got the funding for this project, the, this project was funded in, with the 2006 and 2012 bonding program. The 2006 uh, bonding program that we have was basically to fund um, a single conventional drainage improvement system. In 2008, the Mill Creek project and the Peaks Run project, they were just uh, combined into one tunnel project. What happened next? In 2012, the State Thomas drainage um, improvement um, project combined with the other two projects. And then that's why we have uh, a next, uh, the following bonding program, so the 2012, that was uh, used to provide additional um, funding to the entire constru uh, construction of the entire drainage project. Um, I'm gonna let you to, with Todd Woodson from HALF, he's gonna talk about the next follow the following uh, slides. Thank you, Jose, again. Thank you all for being here. My name is Todd Woodson and I'm with HALF and we're the tunnel designers on the project, and Coe Engineering has done all the um, tunnel design, the shafts, the support, and things of that nature. And with that, we'll start with just a brief overview of the project, and we'll, I guess because I'm an Aggie, we're gonna start it with shaft side F and work our way backwards instead of starting at the outfall and working our way forwards. So again, here's a, a slide showing the layout of the tunnel. <coughs> it does start at White Rock Creek, with, with the outfall here, <coughs> which is also the main construction site. It continues to the north um, toward Fair Park. It hugs the, the north side of Fair Park. It continues across Interstate 30, up near Buckner Park, and then finishes at State Thomas, which is on the other side of Woodall Rogers, and we cross underneath Central Expressway. Just an um, overall summary of the project, it is five miles long. <clears throat> it's primarily a 30-foot diameter tunnel, but we also have a 30 by 35-foot horseshoe section. We have a 30,000 GPM dewatering station, and there are seven shafts that are included with the project. The tunnel will be constructed in the Austin Chalk, with the only exception being the, the initial excavation for the shafts. 
this slide here is a profile of the tunnel. <clears throat> As you can see, it is a deep tunnel. It ranges in depth between 50, 70 and 150 feet below the ground. The light tan on the top is, is the overburdened soils. The light gray in the middle is the Austin Formation. And you can see in the lower left-hand corner of the slide where we are just above the Eagle Ford Shell. So the tunnel is primarily mined in the Austin, or not primarily, the tunnel is mined in the Austin Chalk. Again, this is a, a slide of the sections. The truck is in the slide to give you an idea of scale. We're not planning to put any semis in the, tr in the tunnel. Uh, it is currently designed to allow the tunnel to be mined with um, with the TBM for the full length. Once the TBM excavation is complete, you would come back and over excavate to create the horseshoe section. So now we'll go through each of the shaft sites. This is shaft site F, which is adjacent to what all Rogers Expressway. Just to on the other side of Fairmont Street, you'll see the Federal Reserve property there. One thing of note at this site, is that the Federal Reserve takes deliveries at Fairmont Street. So this street must remain open at all times during construction. <clears throat> the next thing of note, you'll see the lateral, or the, the orange line that represents a subsurface tunnel lateral that connects, goes through here and it connects to an existing deep tunnel system in Fairmont Street. All that work is subsurface work. It's a 14 foot horseshoe tunnel. And the connection to the existing structure would also occur below ground. Let's see. This gives a, a just an idea of what the site looks like looking back toward Woodall Rogers. This slide is a is the profile of tunnel lateral F and it also contains a small portion of the main tunnel. As you can see the existing tunnel here it's shown blue for a reason. It holds water, so one, and it's operational today. So this final connection cannot be made until the tunnel is operational and ready to accept stormwater. Because it'll have to, the drainage will have to continue through here until the, it can be diverted through the new tunnel. <clears throat> this is intake site E. It's near San Jacinto and Apple Street. And at this point, all these intake sites are very similar. We have our shaft at this location, a tangential vortex inlet structure to bring water from the near surface systems down to the deep tunnel. We have a surface collection system. And at this location, we have some street and utility improvements that go along with it. And this photo here gives you an idea of, of what the site looks like. This slide is a, we're not going to go through all the, the lateral profiles, but this gives you an idea of tunnel lateral E. All the laterals that connect from the near surface systems to the deep tunnel go through a drop shaft. That drop shaft connects to a lateral and that lateral connects to the main tunnel. These are all this is the only one we're going to show, but they're all similar in concept. The only thing that differs is the shafts are slightly or of various diameters and the laterals are all slightly different. This is intake site D. This is near Buckner Park and Crockett Park. There's a resident whoops. There's a residential lot adjacent to this site. It, we do allow in the contract the closure of Victor Street to provide a little more working space during the construction of this shaft. And just to give you an idea of the size of the site, here's a, a photo looking back into the, the lot. So at site D, we have some of the most significant surface work or near surface improvements of anywhere else on the project. In addition to the tunnel work, we're also putting in roughly 1,500 feet of nine by nine box culvert, all the street reconstruction that's associated with that. And in addition to that, we have a, a project from DWU that's added to it 
that includes a 36 inch wastewater line in North Peak Street and Worth Street. And those are, that's for those of y'all familiar, that's basically set up as a stand, it's not standalone, but it's a DWU project and it would be built in accordance with their requirements, but it is part of this contract. Let me back up. Um, Zaragoza Elementary School is at this site. The school is currently constructing a drop-off location at, right here, so any work adjacent to that drop-off location must occur during the summer break when school is not in session. Then the rest of the work requires street, this is where the nine by nine box is, and so we'll have all the street reconstruction. This is Gaston Avenue here. It's a four lane undivided street, and during construction, you will only be able to close it. You must maintain two way traffic at all times. You'll be able to do it in halves, but you will not be able to close the road. So that brings us to intake site C. It's adjacent to Interstate 30. And one thing of note at this location is there's a hike and bike trail. The Santa Fe Trail is, is a hike and bike trail. There's a portion of the trail that will be reconstructed to accommodate the utility construction. So you will be required to post detouring for that trail so that for the bicycles and users to know when you're out there. And then you can see the shaft site is right here and the shafts in, the, in this corner. And then this gives you a, a, an idea of what the site looks like, and there's the trail that goes um, adjacent or runs adjacent to the site. That brings us to intake site A, which is adjacent to Fair Park. At this site, we are doing some roadway reconstruction of McKenzie Street and the associated utilities. Our shaft is here, shaft A is here, and then shaft. P or the pump station dewatering shaft is right here. This location is similar to the others. We have a connection to the existing system, the shaft, and the associated work that goes along with it. And this gives you an idea of what the street location looks like. We don't have a photo right now of, of, the, um, of the actual shaft site. This is a section of the dewatering station. It's a 20, shaft P is a 20 foot diameter shaft. It has three um, submersible pumps. They're on the order of 500 horsepower in size and it also has a small sump pump included with it. And that brings us to the outfall shaft, shaft site O. This is the primary work shaft for the project. All the, t the TBM will be inserted at this location. All the mucking from the excavation process will come out, of, from the main tunnel excavation process will come out of this shaft. Um, one thing to note, the shaft is within the 100 year floodplain. So one of the first operations you'll have will be to raise this site up above the 100 year floodplain elevation to prevent the shaft from flooding. In addition to the the shaft improvements that we have at this location, we are, what, one of the first things we believe people will do is reconstruct Barber Avenue to provide um, better access to the site during construction. It's basically, today, once you get past here, it's barely one lane wide. So it's included in the contract to reconstruct it and we um, believe that, it, I think it's actually required to do that first. And that gives you an idea of what shaft side F look, or shaft side O looks like. This is the tunnel outfall structure. This is a completed section of the structure. It's a 40 foot diameter shaft with um, riprap surrounding the concrete riprap surrounding the shaft. And I use riprap li loosely because it's two foot thick and it's reinforced, so it's a um, hefty riprap. And with that, I will turn it back over to Milton. Thank you, Todd. Um, I need the clicker. 
I just wanted to highlight uh, our outpost site just a moment. Uh, the property that's shown in blue has been acquired by the city and will be available for the contractor to use, while the primary location would be on the north side, which, which is four to five acres large, about four and a, a little over five, excuse me, a little over five acres in size. There are some lots on the south side of our barber that, you could, that would be available to use however the contractor would like to use them. There are, some of these lots are heavily treed and we would have to, you'd have to work with our forester to, um, for any of the tree removals on, on the south side lots. We have acquired all the property for the project on the surface, uh, the intake sites and the outfall site is acquired. Um, all of the privately held easements, uh, which is all but seven, have been acquired. We are still in the process of acquiring those seven from TxDOT and DART. Okay, uh, now's the fun part of the program. Uh, I'm, I'll ask Scott Morris with our Stormwater Management Division to come up and talk about stormwater pollution prevention. Thank you, Scott. Morning. Oh. Do I need this? Okay, um, like I said, my name is Scott Morris. I'm with the uh, Stormwater Man Management Division. Uh, I work mostly, I'm a supervisor over there. I work mostly with construction and industrial facilities and those, con and those inspections. And we'll talk about uh, stormwater, who regulates it, and stormwater pollution prevention plans for about five or 10 minutes here. Um, like I said, what is stormwater? Who is stormwater management? What is an MS4 permit? What is the uh, TEPDES construction general permit? And stormwater pollution prevention plans. So stormwater is, storm, is rainwater runoff. Uh, it flow, every time it rains, it runs down the roofs, it runs down your sidewalks, your driveways, your parking lots. It ultimately goes to the streets. From the streets, it will then flow into the stormwater drainage system. And that's where we'll end up coming in to play. After it goes through the stormwater drainage system, it goes directly, it, just, it discharges directly into the local creeks, lakes, and then the Trinity River. Um, what we do is that we, we actually uh, regulate the stormwater drainage system. Um, we're broken up into multiple groups. We have a compliance and enforcement group which handles construction sites and industrial facilities looking for uh, regu uh, compliance with local, state, and federal regulations. Um, we have an outreach group that handles public education they do presentations, they go to schools, they meet with construction operators, they do all kinds of events trying to inform the public about various pollution prevention issues. Um, we have a water quality group, they do water sampling, they basically are looking to detect and correct any problems they can find when they sample from the local creeks and lakes and in the Trinity River. Um, and then we have a CCTV team who inspects that stormwater system just to make sure there's no, if there's any repairs needed to make sure it's all mapped out, that our mapping system matches what's actually in place underground. Um, the separate, the MS4 permit. Okay, so we hold a MS4 permit, a municipal separate storm sewer system permit with the state of Texas, with the TCEQ. Uh, we applied for this. Uh, actually, our, currently our, we're working under the one from 2011. We've got a new one that's uh, just waiting to be approved by the TCEQ right now. But this is basically gives us the, the, uh, the approval to discharge into that stormwater system and to regulate it and under certain conditions and regulations that they've set forth with us. What you guys will be working under is the TEPDES Construction General Permit. It's labeled the TXR 150,000. You'll, you'll hear it called the CGP. You'll hear it called the TXR 15 or the TXR 150,000. Bunch of different names, all the same thing. It's basically the overarching regulations that you have to work under in order to have approval to discharge into our storm sewer system. Um, it covers all construction activity greater than one acre. It was, went into effect in March, uh, March of 2013. It's only good for five years. So in March of 2018, there'll be a new one. So what that means for you, whoever gets the project is they will have to renew that permit and update their stormwater pollution prevention plan to reflect any new changes to regulations at that time. Speaking of stormwater pollution prevention plans, 
The SWIP must be completed and implemented prior to uh, construction activity. Construction activity includes any grading, clearing, excavation, demolition activity, um, filling in embankment, and any other similar activities that will disturb soil, such as stockpiling of fill material. The SWIP um, must be prepared and implemented prior to beginning the construction activity and prior to applying for um, your coverage, your, your filing, filing your NOI with the uh, state of Texas. It must be prepared by a licensed professional engineer. It must be retained on site and be available and ready for review, and it must be kept current. The SWIP is a living document, so we do expect it to change as the site changes once work begins. And so here are a bunch of resources you can go to. Uh, the City of Dallas, Stormwater Management's website's up there, EPA, TCEQ, and then the North Central Texas Council of Governments. And then if you need to get in touch with us, uh, our address, email address, website, and then uh, my boss, my program manager, his name and phone number up there so you can also get a hold of him as well. And that's it. Let me turn this back over to Milton. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. Okay, so this is very important. We at the City of Dallas uh, take, take this very seriously. Um, we inspect ourselves as, as, as much as we inspect uh, the commercial operators out there on construction sites. So when you're out there working, you're, you'll be, our, our people from stormwater management will be coming out inspecting your BMPs, inspecting your, your uh, SWIPs to be sure that they're up to date. All right, next is um, the City of Dallas Diversity Plan. Used to be called a good faith effort. Um, here. Lisa Alonzo with our business Office of Business Diversity now will take you through it. Thank you, Milton. Uh, yes, Milton mentioned uh, we just recently changed our name is now Office of Business Diversity. I'm here to discuss the MWBE participation the um, MWBE list and the BID forms that need to be turned in with this. Um, there is a goal of 25%. We ask that you do your due diligence and meet that goal, and we would love for you to exceed that goal. Um, we use local and non-local participation. And, of course, anything over 50000 goes to uh, council or um, any of the city contracts. Um, the... The MWBE firms need to be certified at time when this goes to council and through the duration of the contract. When you reach out to your MWBEs, please ask them uh, and make sure that uh, their certification doesn't expire before this goes to council. And if it does, they need to have their certification in to the agency so, um, so they can start. And even though you are a minority certified prime, you still have to do your due diligence and reach out to those certified subs and um, meet the goal. You cannot self-perform the whole contract. Um, I can assist you if you have a relationship with an MWBE uh, sub that is not certified through one of our agencies that we recognize. You can um, um, get them in contact with me and I can help them, assist them with their certification and we can ask to expedite should they be certifiable um, and with their, with their certification. These are the agencies that we recognize, NCTRCA, which is North Central Texas Regional Agency, the Women's Business Council Southwest, and uh, the DFW Minority Supply Development Council. We do not recognize HUB. Should you have a uh, relationship with a sub that is certified through maybe South Central or another agency, uh, we can recognize them. Forms that need to be turned in at time with your packet is Form 203 and Form 204. That is your business inclusion affidavit form. That's the signature page that says you're going to abide by our policy and the ethnic workforce composition form. Should you be the um, awardee, the additional forms need to be turned in five days later, which is your two, Form 213, that's your team makeup, uh, your 
214 subcontractor intent form and 215 the BID documentation form. Um, like I said, those those are those are due once you have been um, informed that you are the awardee. Uh, our council is a stickler now on a diversified team. Um, we there is an MWBE list that I am creating which will be formatted and vetted and which will be given to Milton to, um, it's gonna be an addendum. There are 21 specialties on there, spe you know, scope of works. If you have a scope of work that is not on the list, please contact me and I can add that. Uh, but we do ask that you diversify your team. Um, you know, women, you know, um, Asian, um, minority, you know, Hispanic, you know, we want a diversified team. And these are the reasons why it is an importance to have a diversified team. So, uh, these forms, like I said, that need to be turned in, Form 203 with your packet, 204, your Ethnic Workforce Composition Form. If you're a corporation, um, we want the diversity, we ask that you send that off to your corporation and they send it back. That's what we want, the diverse, the, that's what we want to see. This form 213 is your team makeup. That's the, that's the form that needs to be turned in once you've been um, notified that you are the awardee, 214. And should you not meet the goal of 25%, but really there is no reason because there is a lot of scope of work, a lot of specialties, this form right here uh, needs to be filled out. This is your good faith effort form. This tells us that you have reached out to all those that are on the list, whether it be their price is too high, they're not qualified for or for whatever reason. This form needs to be turned in. Um, I think that's about it on my time. Um, I would like to invite Zarin Gracie, who is uh, the interim manager for our department now. He wants to say a few words. Thank you. All right, uh, was it? good morning. Good morning, everyone. Um, Lisa touched on two things uh, that I specifically want to make sure I highlight and make sure everyone is aware of. Uh, number one, the certification process, the teams that you add, the, the subcontractors that you add, make sure that they are certified at the time. So even when you submit all your paperwork and all those things, just it, it's better if they're already um, certified. Now we can do some um, uh, expedites if we need to, but it makes the process so much easier. And I can't guarantee that they're going to get certified within that time frame anyway. So if you can already make sure that they're certified, get a copy of their certifications, all of that. We can check it as well, but just know if we check it and we tell you that it's not and you end up coming up short on your goal, that's gonna delay uh, some of the process. So please make sure that they're certified at the time. The other thing she talked about was diversity. We did, uh, now, the good thing about this is we've already been through this process. So we know what to expect in terms of, I think the last time we went through this, we, we touched almost about 30, Six, 35, 36 percent, I think is what it was. So we know what to expect in terms of outcome uh, re regarding participation. The other thing about that was that it was a very diverse team. It was a very diverse team. It wasn't, you know, all one gender, all one race or those things. It was very diverse. The council is very big on making sure uh, that, that your team makeup is, is diverse in that aspect. So please keep that in mind as well um, and moving forward. Now, does that mean you're not going to get you know, count it or anything, no. But when having those conversations and I'm talking to council about the outcomes and the participation on these kind of things, these are the kind of conversations, questions that they're asking me. So to avoid all of that, let's just go ahead and make the team diverse there. So I think that was it. It was participation, certification, and diversity. Those are the three things that we're, we're, we're looking at from our perspective. The forms and the process, I think most of you guys, has everyone done business with the city of Dallas, correct? At some point, some level? So are you familiar with those forms? No? All right, well, that's interesting. Okay. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. If you have any questions in regards to the forms, uh, you can shoot uh, uh, Lisa or myself an email, and we'll make sure that you're clear uh, moving forward on those, on those forms, all right? And I think that's all I have. All right, thank you. All right. Thank you, Zarin. All right, well, we're gonna get our construction manager to come up now and take you through some of the project information and constraints, but 
I, I, I did a bad thing a while ago. I left off a couple of people that are critical to our team. One of them is Julie Jones, who works with uh, Nathan Meyer and is on our design team, and Estella Cornelius, Estella, who is our public information uh, officer. All right, Ray. Thanks, Milton. Uh, good morning, and thanks for coming out. Uh, I just want to run through a few of the things that I think you really need to take into consideration as you're putting your bids together. It's a schedule that goes with that. Uh, just to make sure that nothing's left off. This is far from a complete list, but I think it'll help direct some of it. Uh, also in parentheses, after most of these bullets, you're gonna see a reference to the section number in the bidding documents. Uh, we will not have a disputes review board on this project. However, we will be collecting bid escrow documents within three days of notice that you're the low bidder. Uh, so be prepared for that. There will be a geotechnical data report and a geotechnical baseline report included as, bid do as contract documents. There's also a DSC clause. Those only apply to the subsurface work. They do not apply to the surface and near surface work. Be aware of that. Uh, there are a couple of specifics on site security. We are gonna require that the contractor badge everyone coming in and out of the site and there will be an armed guard on, at site Oh, the outfall site, the main working shaft, whenever there are people there working. Uh, there is a rather extensive pre-construction property condition assessment that needs to be taken into account, and the demolition should be done by the time the NTP is, is, comes out, so that should not be an issue at all. Uh, there is no blasting allowed anywhere on this project. Uh, the, all the uh, subsurface work is potentially gassy. There was hazardous gas found during activation of the dark tunnels that we're going under. So it, this will be all uh, potentially gassy. As Todd already pointed out, all the muck from the main tunnel has to come out of the outfall shaft. The laterals and the inlet shafts obviously can be mined from those and mucked out of those, but everything from the main tunnel has got to come out of site O. There is a requirement to probe ahead before any excavation, all excavation in the Austin chalk but for two reasons, for looking for hazardous gases, but also we have trigger levels for water inflow. If we encounter high water inflow, we will require pre-excavation grouting before continuing. There is special settlement monitoring required both at the Woodall Rogers Freeway Bridge and when we go underneath the dark tunnels, be aware of that. Uh, there, there is now a city ordinance that requires rest breaks for all construction workers, 10 minutes every four hours. This was put into place because of some problems on surface works and people working in the sun. We give you no guarantees that you'll get a variance on that, on this project for working underground. So take that into account as well. Uh, there is core viewing both this afternoon and tomorrow. I strongly urge you to go look at the core so that you know what you're getting into here. From material standpoint, uh, we'll be happy to give you directions and there's some, a map associated with that that we can give you. Uh, we will also be happy to give you directions to go visit all the shaft sites and also strongly encourage that. Some of them are right next to houses that are occupied, uh, including the outfall shaft that's right across the street from occupied houses. We were not able to get all of that property that we wanted. Uh, and some of the sites are rather small. So I think it's worth your while to go take a look at all these. It doesn't take very long at all. Uh, partnering, uh, this will commence in conjunction with the pre-construction meeting. The city takes it seriously and it will continue through the length of the project. Uh, there's a, this is a short list of some of the key permits. You just heard about the stormwater permits that you're gonna have to get, uh, including having to redo the one in, in early 18. Uh, there's also a building permit for the pump station and you'll have to be getting a lot of street cut permits for all the near surface work. There is a geotechnical engineering studies that pertains to the near surface and surface works and we'll give you the ground characteristics for those areas separate from the GBR and the GDR. Uh, muck hauling, there's gonna be restrictions as you can see there. It's different restrictions for different shafts. Uh, you will have to abide by these. We are not gonna allow trucks to start lining up at six in the morning waiting for that seven o'clock time to pop in. They're gonna to need to start showing up at seven o'clock and they're gonna need to be out of there by 7 p.m. or they're gonna to have to spend the night. Uh, 
there is a noise ordinance. Uh, the city has already gotten variances to allow work at the different sites, again, different times. We could lose that variance. If the noise ordinance is exceeded and complaints start coming in, there is a fair chance that we would lose the ability to work at night. So whoever gets this project needs to install all of their noise abatement immediately. And that's got to be a big part of getting up and running for this because the last thing we want to do is lose that, that variance that we have in place right now. And there is a whole section that involves all that, 1580. Uh, Again, a repeat of Todd, just a couple of things on site schedule constraints. Because of the State Fair of Texas, Site A is not going to be available uh, September through November every year, and there'll be no work right in front of that school at, at Site D. Uh, that's going to have to be done when school is not in session. And with that, I'll bring Milton back up. Thank you, Ray. Thank you, Ray. Uh, just one thing. We have one more uh, thing we need to mention about our business diversity. I'm sorry, I forgot to mention something. Did everyone here get notified through our VSS system of this solicitation? Or did you hear from it from myself, Milton, Jose, or someone? If you did not get that email notification, that means you have to go back into your system and, and uh, update your profile with the correct commodity code. Maybe whoever is receiving the emails is no longer there or because it's very important because should there be any addendums or anything, this is how you're going to get notified. All the attachments, the forms are on our VSS site under the solicitation. So please go back in, make sure that you are registered correctly, the commodity code in there, and the contact person who is receiving the email notifications is still there. If you have any problems, um, you know, getting into the system, you need to reset your password or whatever, you can contact me and I can assist you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, just quickly go over this one more time because it's very important. Um, when you, when you bid the project, be sure that you bid all the base bid schedules. Be sure that you bid all of the alternates. Um, if you leave out anything there, your bid... I'm being told you can't hear me on the other mic. Okay. Um, when, you, um, when you bid the project, be sure you bid all of the, all of the base bid schedules. Um, there's the, the main schedule for the tunnel work and the, and the surface work, and then there's some water and wastewater schedules that go along with it. Be sure that you bid all of the alternatives. They are deductive alternatives this, this time, um, but be sure that you do provide a, a price for all of those. You must acknowledge all the addenda on the summary page. Uh, whether there's one or a hundred, you must acknowledge all, all of them. And submit all the required documents, all the forms the, uh, that, that are required per the, per the specs. Again, the bid opening is September, or the bid are due by one o'clock on September the 1st. And one of the interesting things here is you have to deliver them to uh, the purchasing agent in 3FN, which is on the third floor here, but you have to go through security. And it's, it's clearly stated in the specs, but we want to point it out again. Security has the right to open all packages. Your documents have to be sealed when you submit them on the third floor. So come prepared. We, they don't normally do it, but they could open your sealed package, your sealed bid, look at it, and then you no longer could, could, could submit it because it's no longer sealed. Be prepared, come prepared to at least seal them after you go through security. Uh, the information, uh, this presentation and a copy of the video of this meeting will be put out on our website uh, in, in the next couple of days as soon as we can get it formatted and put up there for you to look at. So we're ready for questions. I'll ask Ray to come back up. Todd, if you have any questions that you have that we can answer today. Only once. We did such a great job. Yes, sir. Uh, just a second. We'll get you a microphone. Since we are recording it, we need it. We need the microphones on. 
Uh, I just had some kind of housekeeping, housekeeping questions. Yes, sir. On the uh, uh, culvert, uh, on item uh, 1217Z, the type CC great inlets, there's five of them. There's also five of them are on the uh, D2 structure. Are those the same five? Uh, well, those, that's more of a technical question than a housekeeping question. Uh, we'll be happy to answer that question through an addendum. Okay, because I get, okay. Looks like I'm done with all of them. Because mine are all that way. If you'll, if you'll, we, we have a, you can email Ray. Put your address up. You can email Ray at this at, at this email address and submit all the questions that way, and we'll be sure we'll be happy to provide answers in the um, in an addendum. You can also we give out some paper today. You can write your questions down and hand them to me directly. Please put a an, an, please put an email if you want to hand me questions directly on paper today, so I can in case I don't can't read your writing, or I need clarification on the question, I get back in touch with you. But I'm happy to take any and all questions. Yeah, and we'll answer those through the addendum. Yes, sir. Hi, uh, just wondering, what's the basis of award? Is it going to be on the base bid, or? Uh... Um, well, I, I should let the expert on deductive alternates, but let me give it a stab and then we'll see. Um, since we have deductive alternates this time, um, the base bid is the total amount, would be the complete project. I'll try to keep this in front of my mouth. Um, now I'll go to the next slide. Yeah, the base bid would be the complete project. The, the, the deductive alternates take out portions of the project that if for some reason we decide not to award them, we would, we would include them in the bid. But if we award the entire project, that would be the base bid. I'm more wondering, uh, how are you going to award the job? Is it based on the base bid, or is it based on your combination? Well, in, the specs, in the specs, it says we have the right to pick and choose which alternatives we, we include and which alternatives we don't include. And that decision will be made at that time when we look at when the bids come in. Are you planning to read all uh, alternates and base bid at the opening? This time when the bids are open, the base bid will be the, the number read. Because that would, be, that would be the larger of the amounts, that would be the total project. Uh, one last question, just if you could give a little summary about the alternate one. Uh, seems kind of like a funny alternate to have. Is there a funding issue where you want to delete part of the tunnel, or, or how did you guys come up with that one? Um, through, uh, the, 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 the short answer is through decisions made here at City Hall, there was a, a re desire or request to have a possible shortened tunnel. And so that's where we, sh that's why there's a deductive bid to remove the State Thomas end of that of the tunnel. That's it. Thank you. Just as a follow up uh, to the previous question, so how many days do you have to to decide? To well, decide what? What you're going to do when we, between, when the bids come in between base bid and alternate. So we'll be sitting out here in well, limbo. Well, I suppose technically we have 180 days because the bids are good. For We'll, we're looking at, you know, trying to get it done in as fast as possible. Two days, two weeks, as fast, you know, it, it depends upon, you know, the complexity of the bids or the, or the lowest bidders and their, com the completeness of the bids that we look at because we look at part of, part of the review is for the business diversity inclusion, the, you know, the, um, the business diversity goals, whether they're met or not. So it does take a few days, but we should know shortly after the bids come in. Up here.
Thank you. Good morning. Just more of a related question. Has there been an established target date or time frame to get the, uh, the deal before council? Um, as the schedule showed earlier, we're looking at awarding the project um, later in the year, November or December, if would be our, t our goal. Um, and that, you think, well, this is only July, but the bids are due in September. Um, because of the agenda process that we have here at the city of Dallas, um, we're looking at probably a November or a December award date. Okay, I thank you for coming out. Um, I look forward to the bids coming in. We, we are excited to get this project going <clears throat> again. Um, but uh, we, we hope that you all have heard some information and we'll take it to heart and we will give us good bids. At this time, we do have, um, well, we have an hour. If, we need it that long um, to uh, we have the room for another hour for you to have any networking opportunities or for visiting as you wish the staff may be here but you can ask us questions but our the stock answer is going to be send it to mr. Brainerd in an email and we'll answer it in an addendum so. sure one more question would it be possible to ask the primes to kind of uh, locate in uh, an area so the subs could understand who they are? Sure, if, if, they, if they want to. Um, I'm not in charge of that, but if the primes would like to have, you know, hold your hand up or ask so the subs will know who you are, that would be great. Anybody want to hold your hand up as a prime? There you go. So... They're kind of on this in this quarter right here. Don't have a photographic memory. Thank you. <laughs> All right. All right. Then we appreciate you coming out. We look forward to the bids. Thank you.